Hey everybody, Asher here, back with more Kerbal Space Program, where today we're going to be diving back into career mode, where we left off last time. You can see the requirements here for our mission today. We are going to be sending Valentina Kerman, hopefully into space, at an altitude of at least 70 kilometers and a distance flight of at least 100 kilometers away. So that'll get us some more funds, which as you saw before, we're doing a little healthy on the fund department, but this is a pretty expensive launch. So if we screw it up, we're going to have some issues, not just because Valentina will go poof, although I do not have permadeath on. It's still just, it costs a lot to replace people, as we saw in the last video. So this ship is right at 30 parts. And this is, uh, and I apologize for the uh, little sniffle there. But I want to talk about some of the features of it real quick. First off, it has a heat shield down here. So when it comes back, hopefully it doesn't burn to a crisp. Last time I sent in a test run of Valentina into orbit, she did burn to a crisp, despite the heat shield. So we'll see if we can fix that this time. Secondly, we have nose cones on top of the solid state boosters because those actually help the aerodynamics now instead of the flat head. And then third, we have dorsal fins because as you'll see, we're not going to be going full throttle on this engine the whole time. If you go full throttle, your nose may pitch back down, but these wings are here to try and help us get into space. So this is the swallowtail. Let's see if we can actually fly it and get into orbit. All right, so here we go. We are outside. We're just going to do this every time now is uh, try and get the maps going, try and have this present right there. I'm not too worried about the notifications as they go, but with four solid state boosters, we're going to have quite a bit of push. So hopefully these dorsal fins will help with the stability. They weren't quite as necessary in the original Carbon Space Program. The nose cones were a liability. They just added mass and didn't do anything other than make ships look cool. But now we're going to fly. Once again, for those of you who may remember my old Kerbal Space Program or coming back from yourself playing, you don't really fly up high into the atmosphere and then turn. You can't really do that anymore because that'll make you pitch down fast and then you can't really recover because we have new aerodynamic models. So what we're going to do this time is just launch like this and we're going to try and gravity turn immediately. Tip the nose to the right to the 90 degree angle. And you can see that I'm already having to work just to keep that stable. I'm actually getting a little bit of a more of a turn than I'd like here. So we're going to have solid state boosters off and new rocket. So we're just going to see what we can do here. Accelerate just a little bit because we want to get higher up into the atmosphere without necessarily... Uh, we want to actually get our gravity turn a little more by now. I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense here, but our SAS is working kind of over time. We may be able to escape the atmosphere. I don't know if we're necessarily going to be able to orbit right now. Now, I do have some old flight plans and abilities that could get me into orbit, but some of that has to do with unlocking the uh, Terrier, the LV-909, which is actually in a different part of the tech tree now. So now it's going to take someone that's a little more talented than me just to do that. So we will keep the SAS right here. We're kind of back on track. Dorsal fins making a huge difference. You can see we're going to get up to a hundred thousand meters and we're not going to have enough to really do much more than that, but that's okay. Like I said, our goal here is to get Valentina out into space. Let's go ahead and get a crew report. I think we already have one from the upper atmosphere, so I don't know if we have to worry about that much. Materials Bay from the upper atmosphere, I don't think we care very much. So this is part one. We just want to go ahead and fly towards the horizon. This is a good basis for what we can do in the future, but since we're kind of capped at 30 parts, I know there's more efficient ways to possibly make a uh, ship that'll last, but we want something that's safe. And like I said, I really hope that Valentina doesn't explode this time. That would make me sad. I do have the old B-roll footage. Maybe I'll splice it in at some point of just her going boom and my kind of reaction to it. But there we go. We're, we've got some contracts done. Let's go ahead and do the science here, including a, a crew report from space near Kerbin. Let's keep the data. Let's go ahead and observe the materials bay. And we will see that the microgravity has greatly affected the growth of 25 science. And then we have one goo canister here. Maybe I could go ahead and collect both because I don't have a scientist on here. And we can just try and go for a maximum gain because at least at this flight trajectory, if I stretch this all the way out, we are probably going to be going in for a watery landing. We may hit over here. I doubt it. Depends on if I angle. If I accelerate an angle maybe to the southeast, we could hit the Badlands. Maybe we should try that. So if we just kind of do our burn... As you can see, we're getting close to the apoapsis. In fact, they should have been burning by now. Atmosphere, not as much of an issue in space. But we are just going to try and... Oh, that's not the way I wanted to go. 
That's right, you burn opposites of what you're trying to do here. So we're just going to readjust and look at that. I actually derped to the point of I was hoping to actually get my stuff to go all the way over here. But here we are. Now maybe if I'd used some larger solid rocket boosters I could have been in better shape. But for now, Swallowtail at least being efficient. The safety is our number one concern at the Kerbal Space Center, I promise you. How are we doing? We are out of fuel. We cannot EVA to get more because we have not upgraded that part of it yet, but still a pretty nice flight. I do look forward to getting my mods back eventually. But we'll see. I'm pretty sure this is still going to be a water landing. So we're not near orbit yet. But still, if we can at least upgrade the Space Center because we do have, we definitely have the funds for it, or somewhere near it, we can at least give it a shot. Now we are getting back into the atmosphere, which means we need to stage. And more importantly, we need to do the thing that hopefully will work this time and did not work for me in a test run before, which is use the heat shield. Now there goes our other part of the ship. It's going to burn up to a crisp and actually explode. We have the heat shield right here, and you can't really see it because of where the sunlight is too well. But this, is, this has a 200 ablation rating, so it's going to actually burn off. And there's Minmus. I said last time you can see Minmus from the sky as like a point in there. So we have Kerbal, the sun, Minmus right there, and a heat shield, maybe a shooting star going down into the world. And Valentina, I really don't think you're going to make it to landfall. It looks a little bit like she might, but she's not going to. So once again, the death knell for this is if I somehow let the nose point forward. This heat shield is blocking all of the heat resistance right now. You're going to see it's going to start tearing off here before long. So I'm actually going to have to do some work, some manual control, because we are going really, really fast. And I don't know if these legs are going to survive or not. I don't know if the um, materials bay is going to survive or not. I don't know. Oh, no, Valentina, why? This is going to end so poorly. Cannot autosave at this point. So, if last video was about getting started, this video is about trying to solve this problem. The good news is that, well, that's not good news. The good news is that we had some stuff going, hey, look, we got, we set records, we got money, and we killed our pilot. So, Space Center. Like I said, we do not have permadeath on. So Valentina is only missing. She's not killed in action. If it was one of these people, they'd be killed in action. And part of that is because I'm still trying to learn the ropes for flying. And so far, I've got the flying part down. It's the re-entry that's an issue. And I don't know if my angle of attack is just not great. Because I have managed to do some splashdowns. Okay, let's see if we got some new contracts. It looks like we do. So we can test the engine. I'm really looking for things that uh, will give me lots of money. We do have space tourism, which is a start. So they want to keep them... They want to travel to certain locations, and we can actually, should be able to look at the uh, tracking station to see where these missions will take us. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, maybe not the tracking station. First thing is first, though. I can't actually, well, I can accept one contract. So we'll just go ahead and get the uh, Rocket Max Brandy Coupler, uh, Launch Stability Enhancer. I'm going to get some of the, I'm going to pick up the one VIP. He wants a travel itinerary, he wants a suborbital flight on Kerbin. Well, I don't know if we'll actually get you there. He wants suborbital flight, suborbital flight. Well, those are good. Apparently all we can supposedly do is suborbital flying, so we'll see if we can at least get someone without actually dying. So how do we get the space tourist into our boat? It should be the crew section. Yep, there is the tourist, Seely Kerman. So we have to actually make a different style of ship for this. We're not going to do that yet. The first thing we need to do is just kind of do the reiteration of how do we keep ourselves from dying right here? Because mm, maybe I do need to change it so that when I enter back into the atmosphere, I don't flip over like that because there wasn't a lot I could do. Let's actually change these to... Uh, big solid boosters and hang on don't save 
forgot to actually do the upgrade here. Upgrade! We can have more parts. Let's get more fuel. So like I said, at least if we can't survive the landing, we're going to try to get in the orbit here. And let's go ahead and put some of the bigger, bigger rocket engines on here. I think between that and this, we should, oh well, would help if I actually put four of them. This is going to be another expensive launch, but we, we really want to get into orbit before we send tourists into space on our own dollar. I mean, it's, I really wonder how uh, space tourism is going to affect the space industry in the coming years, because already there's uh, so much of a private push for it compared to what there used to be. All right, so we have one here. I think we're okay. We'll try it. We'll see if we can get this. I at least want to get one orbit. And, and I mean, orbit's not really the issue. It's actually the whole landing part afterwards. So what do I do? Let's actually... I kind of want to keep some of the stuff on. We're just going to stay like this and see. Because so far, I could possibly put some radial parachutes on it and see if this will survive. But once it gets far enough away from me, I won't be able to track it. Let's give it a, well, let's put some radial parachutes on top since we have the parts. Yeah, my number one problem that I have right now is that I flip too often when doing a landing like this. We do not want a set of four. There we go. Like that, supposedly. We'll just cover up the icon. It's no biggie. Yay. Let's actually put it kind of locked in place. All right, we're good, maybe. Jeb, please don't die. Swallowtail Mark II, because if one wasn't enough, two should be able to do something. But we'll see. We don't have reputation lost too much from killing our Kerbals yet. Sorry, Valentina. These are not exactly level, but ooh, that's really bad. We're gonna launch anyway. We're gonna gravity turn right away. We're already spinning because this is a lot heavier. We're going a lot faster. But Jebediah is going to be okay. He's got this. He's been around since uh, pretty much there was Kerbals in Kerbal Space Program. So notice how awesome our gravity turn is going right now with this hunk of junk. I'll give you a warning. It's not going at all. And we're kind of on fire. Please turn. Please turn. Would help if I actually started the engine. All right, so we already lost some delta V in efficiency there just by doing that, but we do have the uh, engine with the uh, thrust adjustments, so we'll see if we can fix this just a little bit. I don't know if we get into orbit with this ship either, especially with that terrible, terrible launch, but at least we're out of the atmosphere without too much danger. So things are pretty stable. How high up are we going right now? 73, 75, 76. We might be able to pull it off. 80. I want to do a stable orbit of 100. It's fun. It's The fun part of this, in a way, is me getting to relearn how to do everything I used to know how to do for so long. Because it's not just can we make it back into space. It's uh, can we make it back to ground. And I never really did play with deadly reentry before. So that may inform me a little bit of, oh, maybe I shouldn't let my orbit naturally decay and come in so, like, horizontal. But the other issue I have is just that my freaking pod's flipping, and I don't like that. So let's see, how close are we to Apoapse? It's not close enough. Because we want to have kind of an even burn. That's good enough. We're probably still going to burn through all of our fuel. That's okay. Whee! This is how you go to space. What does Jeb think about space? 25 signs to be had. Crew report, there we go. Said so if we just keep killing our pilots, then let's just chalk it up to uh, lessons learned. We'll hire another pilot. Because that's how that's supposed to work. So our apoapsis is actually going up. We can probably nose down just a little bit. Because we're not in the atmosphere, so that's not a problem now. In fact, I may just hold off here a little bit. We're not going to be in orbit. And I could have taken my lovely little space tourist with me. It's a little too far. It's all right. Whee! Let's just burn the rest of our fuel. 
Maybe we get into orbit. I don't know. We're pretty close. If I get in, the problem is that if I get into a little too close of an orbit without being able to deorbit, now we're kind of in a pickle because it's like I'm still suborbital. I have enough fuel to uh, possibly get into orbit. If I had burned more efficiently, I could have probably made it into orbit. But now I have to worry about my orbit degrading here. So let's see here: 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yeah, we can. We are totally going to get into orbit. 40, 50, 60, 70. There we go. And just enough fuel to spare. We are orbiting Kerbin. We've got the contract. Don't tell the recovery team that you're staying in space. They're still looking. Great job. All right, so we're going to do the same thing we did last time, other than hoping that Jeb doesn't die here. Because we do have a little bit of fuel. I remember someone chiding me before, like, um, that little bit of fuel is still just enough to make it. Or it's like where the way Scott Manley would say, we have tons of fuel left. We have like six units. That is enough once we get to the apoapse to drop us back down and let the orbit naturally degrade. I just hit the wrong button. All right, looks like we are still okay. I did quick save to get back to this point just in case because I really want to be able to experiment and see can I keep Jeb from dying while trying to land here as Valentin is obviously going to rematerialize. Let's go ahead and do one orbit around. Because this is still this is still one of the nice rewarding things just to say okay I actually made it back up into space after some changes in the atmosphere you have not conquered me planet although you look particularly dark right there here is the beautiful sunrise any minute now there we go there is the the Kerbal rise over the seas of Kerbin we have one actual orbit and then we get to kind of figure out where we're going to land here. I'd really love to land on the daytime side, so we're probably just going to knock that periapsis down just a little bit. I'm a little concerned about going too deep into the ocean, but or too deep into the atmosphere. I'd rather maybe have a more of a drop. But let's go see if the Science Center has something for us first. All right. So what do we have? Fly to the moon, perform visual surveys, ferry two tourists around. We, like I said, we're going to try some space tourism here before long, but we don't have we don't have anything that's like get science from space, which I guess is a little too easy. But we've already gotten so much, so flying to the moon can be a worthwhile next mission. But I kind of want to explore the space tourism a little bit. Now, don't forget that we do also have some of these campaigns as well. I'm not really huge on getting into these just yet because I want to take a look into them a little more. I can accelerate my science uh, in exchange for reputation. I can uh, take funds and yield one science per funds earned. That doesn't seem like a lot, but I can't really commit very high to it just yet. So we may revisit this once I get a little bit further on because right now we can only go to 25% commitment. We still have plenty of science though, but let's go back to the tracking station and our flight in progress as we have uh, he wants to go okay that's one of the observed locations all right let's fly all right back to back to orbit I think it is probably time we went ahead and killed our orbit though so do this the same as last time just try and rotate ever so slowly we're gonna be using our good old electric charge here New physics model still does this pretty well though, because it's just a reaction wheel trying to rotate you around. And we want to burn on the uh, this marker. Not the prograde marker, the other one. And we're just going to knock down our uh, periaps. 50, 40, 30. That should be enough. I don't want to go too aggressive into the atmosphere. Unfortunately, this does mean that we are going to have a nighttime landing. But hey, what can you do, right? I don't know. I wasn't confident about having the fuel to actually knock this down from the periaps, and I'm pretty sure I was correct. So you'll have to bear with the nighttime landing here. We are just going to go ahead and quick save because I really want Jebediah to not get killed here. I mean, it's it's entirely fine to kill him because he'll just respawn, as sadistic as that sounds. But I would strongly prefer to just have things work like I expect them to. So we will just go ahead and re-enter the atmosphere to stay on this marker a little bit. And we are going to go down, down, down. 
our periapsis is at 35, so we're probably going to have a watery landing again. And here we go. We are in the dark. I didn't install any lights onto this, so we do not want to be pointing forward. We want to be pointing backwards. And I don't know if this ship is really going to work too well. I said the biggest thing is I just do not want it careening forward. And I don't know of a great way to stop it. I was pushing the buttons as hard as I could to keep that from happening. But at least we're going to be able to see a nice shooting star. We can also keep our contract up as well. We did have one that was a speed record. Maybe I went ahead and got the speed record. Yeah, I probably did get the speed record just while I was orbiting around because the 70,000 orbit was faster than the 100,000 orbit or something. It might have been close enough. And who cares about land speed record when Jebediah is in space? All right, so here's the part where I just keep talking even though I'm a little nervous about the outcome here. It's nice when Kerbal Space Program makes you nervous again. Didn't used to be that way. Used to be everything was a little bit automatic. But with all the new features, all the new 1.0, the moon will still be my target. And once we figure out the atmospheric flying and what extra hoops we have to jump through, it won't be so bad. Still those 60,000 meters. I really hope the front here doesn't get uh, like just screwed up. I have three parachutes back here. Hopefully I can, maybe I should cut them on early just so they drag. I just don't want the parachutes to catch on fire. Because my problem is my ship actually turning while it's on fire. If I could get it to not do that, I mean, it's, it's, it's how you solve a lot of problems, right? All right, so the Swallowtail Debris, I don't know if the, those should decelerate from orbit as well. But if they don't, I'll take care of it. Might as well get, I think I have both of these canisters already fixed. Do we have any other crew reports? Let's not overwrite the one from space. Yeah, it's really too bad I don't have anything for people to transmit their stuff, but like I said, we're we're in the dark. As much as I'd love this video to be in the daylight, we are not. So 50,000 meters and decelerating. I could physical time accelerate just a little bit. 50,000 meters isn't the part that I'm worried about. It's this area of the atmosphere. And I don't know when the best time is to cut on my chutes. But it's probably not while everything's on fire. Because those aren't really made to resist the heat. Alright, so 40,000. Still in physical time acceleration. And that's just going to go ahead and start going back up. While we're being affected by the atmosphere and the force of gravity, we have our ablation. I do want to see how that goes. That's 200 is actually pretty dang tough. Okay, that's not good. Okay, we're now in suborbital. You know that because of the change in the uh, tilt. So we're just flying again. And are we going to have a land landing? I would just prefer to have a landing in general, but it looks like we may actually be getting to see the sunrise. That would be really nice and picturesque, and it would be lovely if Jebediah didn't explode. So here comes the sun. We'll get an earlier sunrise than the people on the ground because, okay, we're off the ground. But they're going to get a show of something in the sky ahead of time. Little green man in a tin can, something, something rhymes. As our debris continue to fly across here and just... Here's a nice time to reflect on there are cute little moments like this, nice little moments like this, picturesque moments, where you can see the burning galaxies in the distance, the closest star, and our ship beginning to get into the most dangerous part of the mission thus far, which is just, oh my god, are we actually going to tip over again? I really hope not. I would love to not tip over. But I'm going to have to kind of babysit this just to see. And maybe it'll be better because we're not at a different angle and we're not in a position where we're just going to flip over. I don't know. But definitely this does not seem to be the time to uh, turn on the heat shields. But we're just going to try and keep our butt as close to this as possible. As close to the um, anti-grade, that's not the word for it, but as close to that marker as possible. We have not lost anything on the heat shield yet, so we're not really in the serious portion of it, but... 
we're decelerating pretty quickly. Maybe doing most of this deceleration in the upper atmosphere is what we want because right now it's just a pretty light show. And it looks like there's just all kinds of fires. There's the sunrise once more. I don't have the city clouds and lights mod, so I can't necessarily say what's going on down there. I don't know if that's a thing or just a little pip on the mountain, but what we do have is, I guess, some cows in the pasture going moo. So I kind of want to see where we are. It looks like we are on course to make a landfall landing near the coast. So we should be able to get another biome out of this. Notice that I haven't done too much with science from biomes here. But there we go. We are hitting the danger zone of the atmosphere. I really do not want this ship to flip around. Come on, Jeb. Don't flip it. Don't flip it. Like I said, this may not be very tense for you all, but this is uh, Kerbal. I've only had one successful descent from orbit so far in Kerbal Space Program 1.0, and I'd really love to make it two while I'm on camera here. So we can get ours. Are we starting to have some heat shield doing some work? Yeah. One ablator level down as we are trying to pitch really hard. I am keeping the SAS on. There's Minmus in the background again, so bye bye Minmus. And we just do not want to point forward. We do not want to point forward. Okay, so we're not losing control. Things seem to be okay. We are shedding some more heat shield. It looks like we could end up in the drink. We shouldn't be, but we could. It's okay if we do, because that means we haven't burned to a crisp, but I... Oh! 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 Okay, I'm out of landing legs. Oh, no. No, 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 Jeb. No, no, no. Don't do this to me, Jeb. Not you two. Not you two. Oh. Oh, we're going to live. Oh, this is way too close. Oh, my gosh. We lost the science. We lost the science, but Jeb's still alive. Okay, we are going to need to redesign some things, maybe save some of those for the procedural fairings and stuff, but parachute yourself. Oh, man. Maybe we should have transmitted the science because all of our science from this mission is now gone. But at least Jeb's alive. Yeah, that is... We're going to have some good explosions there. That's... Okay, on the one hand, it's very exciting because we have new stuff that we got to worry about. On the other hand... I'm really going to have to go back to the drawing board for some of my designs because maybe if I stack some heat shields underneath some stuff, I can make that work a little better. But I'll have to do a little bit of research. For now, at least Jebediah is alive, so I can probably call this a video. We'll just go ahead and s skip to the... Uh, well, there we go. Heard the little booms. Didn't actually see the booms skip down here just a little bit. That was a good hour flight. Jeb managing to survive by taking his dear sweet time in landing because of course we have way more parachutes than we need. In fact, since we don't have the extra load, we can just cut this one, cut this one, and we'll be good because those parachutes were there to support the extra stuff. So. We had a bad flip. Maybe without that flip, we wouldn't have burned to a crisp like that. I don't know. Frustrating, but we'll go back to the drawing board and figure it out. So next video is going to be doing some space tourism, which includes fun designs and suborbital flight. And then we'll see maybe if we can take things a step higher. So like I said, new contracts and uh, career mode are always exciting and always welcome. But for now, Jebediah is going to be landing, and he is going to be able to do some additional science. It's really too bad that we lost the uh, pads. Or it's it's too bad that we lost the goo here, because that is that is stunning our growth. Take data. EVA report from the grassland, so that's a little bit of science. Board. EVA again, just to store the data. Yep, same as before. EVA report while landed. So some extra extra science to be had and let's go ahead and board recover all right so 23 science at least we got science because we recovered something from morbid but i swear everything else exploded <laughs> and jebediah is level two so that's great is uh valentina out of the infirmary yet 
No, she's not. She's just missing an action. And can we hit the X button to dismiss that? I don't know exactly what that'll do. I guess I'll have to Google that and find out because I don't just want to X her off and have her missing and gone forever. But that's it pretty much for now. This is uh, Asher. We're just going to go ahead and improve our stuff just a little bit more. We have a few options here such as basic science for some more experiments and actually sending probes. We have flight control, we have aviation, so these are all letting you do airplane stuff a lot earlier. And we actually have general construction, maybe one of the more important things here, extra decouplers, structural fuselage, struts are much earlier, brand adapter, governmental pressure, and several led Rocket Max to finally consider creating an adapter to connect its own parts with that of its competitors, and then the stability enhancer, and then we have more things up here. We're not at the fairings yet, but the LB-909 is important enough for me that I'm going to go ahead and research this one first. So that's it for now. This is Asher. We will continue this in the coming time, and we're going to need to actually research plenty more here, but more importantly, get some information just to see, can I get my rockets to not explode when they land? Tough question, tough crowd. Feel free to give some thoughts in the comments if you have some, but thanks for watching. I will see you all next time.